everyone, it's Maki here. This time, I'll be discussing content from the movie Gundam Seed Freedom that contains spoilers. If you prefer to watch the movie without any prior information, I recommend skipping this episode. We've become accustomed to hearing news about the box office success of the movie. According to information released on February 19, 1.86 million tickets have been sold, and the box office has exceeded 3.126 billion yen. This far surpasses the previous record of 2.3 billion yen set by the original Gundam. Of course, this is just the box office for the movie itself. There is also income from model kits and related merchandise. The novel for the movie sold out shortly after its release and is currently waiting to be replenished. What fans are eagerly anticipating is the release of more Ani works. With such a strong performance, I predict that there's a very high chance that some form of new work will be produced. In this episode, I'll delve deeper into the world of the movie based on comments made by the director on the domestic radio show and content discussed at events. My show will continue to bring you fun information about the Gundam series. Hit the subscribe button to prepare yourself for the talk. First, about the developments after the story of the movie ends. Director Mitsuo Fukuda talked about this on a program called Otaku Gastronomy. The host of this program is Hisanori Yoshida, who voiced Yap, a member of the Lost Crime Assassination Squad in Sea Destiny. So what happens to Kira and the others after the final battle of the movie? Lars and Dasran, who descended to Earth immediately after the battle, were officially listed as missing, presumed dead. Hmm? <laughs> That's a mystery way to put it. It's important to note that this is only Mr. Fukuta's opinion at this time. If it is decided to make an official new anime series, a new story will be created through discussions with many staff members, so keep that in mind. Lars arrives at the beach with Kira, and the two of them share a kiss as the story of the movie comes to an end. It's a scene that gives the impression of a new generation's Adam and Eve. During Wolfie's declaration to the world, it was revealed that Lars crying is on the code. She may be in a very dangerous situation. Given the precedent of George Grant's assassination, it may be necessary to conceal her existence. Of course, Kira Yamato is also a prime target for Blue Cosmos, preparing an official record that Kira and Lars are missing after the final battle might be convenient to protect their peaceful lives. This situation is reminiscent of Shao's counterattack, where Amao and Shao were listed as missing, presumed dead. The information that Asran is missing, presumed dead, is also a mystery. In fact, Mr. Fukuda did not discuss Asran in detail regarding Law's crime. He specifically mentioned because the fact that she is on the cult became known worldwide. Her very existence became extremely unstable, so we setting her status to missing, presumed dead. The reason for Asran's missing presumed dead status is completely unknown. In fact, as the son of Patrick Zar and someone who has performed legendary feats on many battlefields, it might be best to publicly list him as missing presumed dead, similar to Lars. In the final scene of the movie, Afran is last seen flying the Cavalier Efreet with Cavalry. The scene where he proudly displays the protective stone given to him by Cavalry must have reassured many fans. The Cavalier flies with the Elf's mobile suit squad. Given that Cavalry is the leader of Orb, it's natural to assume that they're on their way back to Orb. Maybe the character who appears at the end of the movie is not Asranzar, but Alex Dino. 
Mr. Fukuto responded to the question. Will Aspirin play an active role? At the completion announcement meeting with the Johto, saying was Aspirin there, Alex was. While Kira Yamato and the others interacted with him as Asran's are, it's possible that the official record says Alex Dino, a member of Tamino, cooperated with Campus. In Japan, an event was held for the Seed series. There were performances by the artists who worked on the same songs, and talks by the cast members. No topics regarding the next work were mentioned at this event. What left an impression on me was the conversation between Soichiro Hoshi, who voiced Kiro and Akira Aishida, who voiced Afran. Mr. Hoshi said the scene, where Kiro and Afran have a fist fight and share their true feelings, was great. Mr. Aishida replied they didn't have a fist fight, Afran was never hit drawing laughter. From the audience. Mr. Ishida continued organically. The positions of Kiro, Afran, and Shin may have changed, but personally I feel their relationship hasn't changed. Kenichi Sasuya, who voiced Shin, also commented the fight scene between Kiro and Afran represents Seed well. In the Seed series, Kiro and Afran are the center of attention, while Shin causes trouble from the sidelines. It's a very heartwarming scene. Hiro Shimono, who voiced Ofi, also commented. Ofi was really a pitiful character until the end. I think he could have become a better leader if he had crushed with his cameras and exchanged their true feelings. Or Gentry addresses Ofi and the others as my children. In the final battle, however Ofi cries out why does no one love me and challenges Kiro and lost to a fight. As an occult capable of reading human hearts, Ofi may have already known Nora's true intentions. Ofi played the role of the villain straightforwardly. Still, it feels like there are many untold stories hidden within him. Mr. Fukuta commented on the making of the film. This movie was made with the aim of delivering what everyone wanted to see, rather than aiming for a work that would go down in history or a masterpiece we aimed for a finish that fans could enjoy. It was my mission to create something enjoyable for the fans who have waited a long time. I left attracting new fans to other works and concentrated on producing for long-time fans. The opinion of fans who want a sequel is pleasing, but also confusing. If a continuation of the story of the movie were to be produced, it is uncertain whether it would result in something that the fans would want to see. In fact, I personally do not have an enthusiastic opinion about the freedom hijacking incident. That's because we've already created a significant climax in the movie. However, if Sunrise or Bandai request it, I am willing to work as a professional creator. How would you feel about that? The Universal Century series also took on great challenges. Shao's counterattack showed the development that fans wanted, the battle between Amao and Shar. Then the Universal Century series without Amao and Shar was born. Gundam Phobia 91 was confusing for some fans who liked Amao and Shar. However, it was these challenges that laid the foundation for the birth of many works. Personally, I hope to see such challenges in the Seed series as well. Let's meet again in the next program.